Palestine mandate is ended, Britain is relieved of a burden. Sir Alan Cunningham takes leave of the troops who have shown exemplary patience in a thankless task. Ten weeks more are required for complete withdrawal. With the end of the mandatory power, all legal bars to immigration are removed. The seas are now open to the seekers of the promised land. The refugees from memories of war-scarred Europe land in a country already in the grip of bitter racial strife. Tel Aviv, key Jewish city, is all rejoicing as the elected head of the provisional government, David Ben-Gurion, arrives to read the proclamation of a new nation, the State of Israel. Born in the throes of war, with undefined frontiers, facing Arab opposition, the new state precipitates a world problem. The tillers of its fields go armed, while the world's United Nations engage in futile talk at Lake Success. Tel Aviv comes under Egyptian aerial bombardment. The city feels the type of civilization from which the Jews fled and which the Arabs seek to keep from their shores. One Egyptian raider is brought down. Abdullah of Transjordan, Farouk of Egypt and Ibn Saud of Arabia unite the Arab world against the Jewish state. Abdullah alone commands an efficient fighting force, the Arab Legion, trained and equipped by Britain under the terms of her treaty with Transjordan. Unless United Nations declare Abdullah the aggressor, Britain remains bound by the treaty. Upon this king of a small state rests the responsibility of a world statesman. The lives of countless people hang on his decisions. May he act wisely. <laughs> 